There's a lot of mangaka that didn't go to school to become mangaka. Oda, who created One Piece, is a fucking, he's a college dropout. And there's a bunch of other mangaka that never went to school. They ended up like just working on their craft and figuring out the path for themselves. What if Oda would have went to school fully and would we have gotten One Piece? Or we've gotten beaten down by debt or Facts. maybe like a loss of confidence, you know? Going to school isn't, again, as we mentioned before, it's not the it's not a direct path and it's not a direct guarantee. Exactly. It makes your chances probably higher, yeah. but it's not an exact guarantee, mainly because it's not like you go to school to become a mangaka and then you graduate and then somebody goes, hey, here's your diploma <laughs> and here's your first paycheck. You're signed. <laughs> yeah, for, here's, here's your deal. Here's your showing a job deal, work like that. You go to school. It's over 9,000! What is up, y'all? What is good? You know the vibes. Keeping it 9,000. Otaku with my... Bro Taku. Shona with my... Bronin. Anime conversations from a... NYC. POV. Is there? You know the vibes. All right. You know what to do. Follow us on all social media platforms. You can find us on Instagram. You can find us on TikTok, Facebook, YouTube. We also have a Discord. That Discord, we have anime-based conversations where we talk about any random things or any specific things that are trending within anime. Latest manga chapters. Um, anime news. Things that popped off in anime. Like we, we have a lot of different conversations in there. So make sure you get in there and jump into the convo and yes, participate. Sir. We don't have these conversations without y'all. So, you know, be one with the convo and, uh, you know, join the nonsense. That's a fact. Yeah, let's just get into this episode. Let's get to it, man. On this episode, we're doing something a little different. Facts. We're having a little educational moment. For all y'all people, man. For all y'all people. Jayquell and I have decided to do a little bit of research where we've scoured the internet and asked ourselves a major question that is highly related to the podcast that we do. Yeah. How is the medium that we take in, enjoy, and, you know, just like take so much out of and speak about on a weekly basis yes, sir. made? Facts. How is anime and manga made? What's the process? What's the process? What does it take? Um, who's involved? There's a lot of people. A lot of people. A lot of people, a lot of money. A lot of people, a lot of money, and a lot of different, like, you know, just functions that it takes to make this machine move so well in the way that it does. I mean, fact. well in some ways, not well in other ways. We'll get into that, though. Yes, sir. Yeah, so let's just kick it off. Let's I'm going to kick it off with uh, manga. Okay, so let them know what is a manga for the people who don't know what a 100%. manga is. A manga is essentially a Japanese comic book. A Japanese comic book that is read in the reverse order, in the reverse form in which you're used to reading a book. All books, for the most part, are read from left to right. Mm -hmm. Mangaka are re mangaka. <laughs> Mangas are read from right to left. Yes, sir. So you're going this way, and then you're going this way. Pew. Or if the camera's reversed, you're going this way, and then you're going that way. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, so basically that's all that a manga is. They usually drop, it depends on the type of manga, though. Sometimes they drop mm -hmm. on the weekly online that you can pick it up. Other times they may drop monthly. Yeah. Um, if you're a mangaka that's either really sick or if you just have that, amount of, have that amount of pull, you can drop your manga whenever you feel like. That's a fact. Whenever you feel like it's your, it's your passion project, drop it once a year, once <laughs> yeah. every three years. Whoa, wait. If it's good. Yeah. And if we like you. And that's just like dropping manga on the, I mean, I guess fairly consistent basis when you're going through week and month. Mm -hmm. But also manga are dropped in volumes when it comes to physical copy mm -hmm. and a volume is just a collection of manga chapters it's usually about three to four chapters and it gets like a major segment of an arc not yeah. the full arc a lot of the time but a decent amount of the arc where it just touches on the subject on it's just a collection of chapters essentially and yeah. those are usually dropped like what was it every That's couple like, months like quarterly yeah like i believe like we get like four volumes a year maybe yeah, maybe roughly. five maybe five maybe six yeah yeah um and just kicking it off, who makes a manga? So we already know, man. It's our boy, the manga, or girl, the, the manga. Our person. <laughs> our person, the manga, yes. aka the manga creator. Exactly. The manga creator is the mangaka, which is basically it's like a cartoonist. M mangaka are, is one who makes a manga. Yes, like a filmmaker. Exactly. You know? Or like a like a author. Exactly. And a lot of times they'll do the drawing of the manga and the storytelling of the manga. Sometimes 
you have a manga uh, just do the art of a manga and then they'll work in tandem with somebody for the storytelling. Right. Very rarely does that happen. I think that happened with One Punch Man. It happened with, um, um, what was that other one? Kageguri, Kateguri, uh, something? Kakiguri. Kakiguri, yeah. And then um, the one about the one about people making manga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Baku something. Bak, uh, Bakugan. Bakugan, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So every once in a while, you'll have like multiple people that it takes to make a manga, which honestly... If you prefer your art to be in the style that you prefer it to be, like if you prefer to do story versus drawing, or if you prefer to draw, then do story. Yeah. Cool. But then I feel like with the way that they get paid and everything, I would just want to do both just because that means I get the bigger bag. You feel me? Yeah. It's not like they're just doubling up how much how much they're making. I feel like they're splitting it into two. They're splitting it into two. Yeah. But as we go a little bit deeper in it, would would you want to take all that full responsibility for yourself? <laughs> Maybe I don't know. It depends bag. on how successful it is. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, because if it's successful as hell, then it's like I ain't splitting this with nobody. <laughs> but <laughs> if it's but if it's like not successful at all, it's like yeah, I might as well just you know t- if I'm gonna be doing all this work, I might as well be not. I might as well not be doing all the work. Yeah, that's a fact. Well, you know, I guess like as a manga co, we never really know how yeah. far our series is gonna go in the beginning. Very true. And like kind of delving back a little bit within mangaka, I just want to talk about how somebody becomes a mangaka. Let's get to it. There's a lot of different uh, paths that one can take. Well, a few different paths that one could take. The most common path is a person deciding that, hey, I want to get into this profession, so I'm going to go to a school and learn how to do it. Okay. And there's a lot of different universities in Japan where you can take you can take art courses within the track of becoming a mangaka, mm-hmm. which is like pretty cool. Like the fact that like it's such an industry and it's such a standard over there already that they just have a direct pipeline for people to be able to get within the field. What a crazy pipeline. Right. Because <laughs> like, yeah, you just go into school, you're learning the you're learning the um, skills that you need to learn. Yeah. Which is more than just being able to know how to draw. Yeah. Because now it's like it's switched up a little bit. Technology has definitely advanced things mm-hmm. where mangaka aren't just drawing on pen with pen and paper anymore. No. Now they're using tablets to tablets. draw. They're using like these specific like drawing programs to be able to draw what they need to draw. Mm-hmm. And it's not like a one for one of drawing on a piece of paper to drawing on a digital comp- media component. Yeah. It's like there's a lot of different types of skills that you need to learn. That's and there's schools and universities that will teach you that, which is dope as hell. Yeah. And um, that is like the most, I guess, I want to say direct path into it because it, it's the same reason why it's a direct path for many other different career paths to yeah. you know, actually be a part of that uh, field that you want to be in. Yeah. If you want to start a business, a lot of people go to business school. They get their bachelor's in business. They get their MBA. Mm-hmm. It's more than just learning the skills that you learn. It's also about making the connections. Yeah, that's very true. Ex- in the industry. Exactly. You're making connections in the industry and you're making connections with your future peers. Mm-hmm. And so with that, Going to school is like a pretty decent path to take because it'll just show you the exact things that you need to do because they already have all the connections that you need to get there. Exactly. Obviously, nothing is guaranteed. Of course not. But it's uh, it's a sm- it's probably a smoother path than most others, you know. Yeah. For sure. And. But that also is to say that it's not the only path that you need to take. No. There's a lot of mangaka that didn't go to school to become mangaka. I believe the creative Bleach didn't go to school. Um, Oda, who created One Piece, is a fucking he's a college dropout. And there's a bunch of other mangaka that never went to school, but they ended up they ended up like just working on their craft and figuring out the path for themselves. They may have had a harder yeah. road, but they were still able to get to that path. That's a fact. I mean, you know, when it comes to just thinking about that, I am, I mean, I don't know if anybody knows me. I am not the biggest uh, advocate for uh, like post professional secondary school and most professions. Uh, And I think that honestly, like, if you are really driven by something inside of you and you can actually just take the time to learn the business yourself or work on other projects to really get more experience in it then go for it and save your money too. True. You know what I'm saying? Like, what if Oda would have went to school fully and would we have gotten One Piece or would we have gotten beaten down by debt or Facts. maybe like a loss of confidence, you know? So we'll never know. Facts. And going to school isn't like the... Going to school isn't, again, as we mentioned before, it's not the it's not a direct path and it's not a direct guarantee. Exactly. It makes your chances 
probably higher, yeah. but it's not an exact guarantee, mainly because it's not like you go to school to become a mangaka and then you graduate and then somebody goes, hey, here's your diploma <laughs> and here's your first paycheck. You're signed. <laughs> yeah, of course. Here's, here's your deal. Here's your show and job deal, work like that. You go to school, you pay that money, you finish, and then you can either... You can either submit your work. You could submit like a one shot to um, to these publishing companies mm -hmm. in a manga contest mm -hmm. and hope that you win along with other people who either went to school or some who didn't either. Yeah. Like anybody can submit their one shots into this yep. or you just submit your work to a publisher or an editor and see if they like it. Mm -hmm. Or you go, let me take some time and actually like really learn this and go into the path of like kind of like the internship route yeah. where you get to know a mangaka and you go, hey, I want to be your assistant for a couple of years. Yeah. I want to see how you tell story. I want to see the skills that you've learned. And like, I want to be able to learn under you to figure out how I myself can be like a mangaka such as you. And honestly, either way is not wrong. Nah, 100% not Each wrong. Each way, we've gotten a lot of successful mangaka out of every single path. That's a fact. You know? And speaking of like manga assistants specifically, I just wanted to list out a couple of mangaka that were um, assistants to somebody before. So Ichiro Oda, he, again, college dropout, but he decided what I want to do is become a mangaka. So I'm going to learn how to do it. And his path was by learning under somebody else. Mm -hmm. So Ichiro Oda was definitely one of them. Another one was, yeah, this just started from the bottom. Hold up. Started from the bottom. Now we here. here. Another one was the guy who, um, I mean, maybe he wasn't, he isn't the best example, but the guy who just, who um, took over um, Boruto, he was actually an assistant to uh, Masashi Kishimoto. Mm -hmm. Another one. We'll close off with the last good one. One more, one more, one more. Nobuhiro Watsuki. He is the creator of Rurouni Kenshin, one of the most popular anime that's ever existed, especially back in the 90s. Mm -hmm. um, not one of the best people, <laughs> but probably one of the... He created one of the best mediums, um, one of the best manga mm -hmm. slash anime that's ever existed, so much so that they've remade it, even with his controversy behind him. Right. He started off as an assistant to a mangaka as well. Mm. Right, there's definitely, again, a lot of different paths where one can take. You can go to school route or you can decide to become a person's assistant and learn through that. And a lot of people who end up going to school end up becoming assistants anyway. So if you could just jump the school point and skip straight to being an assistant, why wouldn't you take that chance? That's a fact. Better on yourself, man. You never know. But again, if you don't have the skills and you want to learn the skills and not want to be self-taught, School might be the best way for you to go to. I agree. I feel like sometimes, say, for example, you go the self-taught route, you may not be able to understand and identify the skills that you know and have, mm -hmm. you know? But it's so like, you know, going to school will allow you to identify those skills. Because uh -huh. gu guaranteed, if you're going to school and you've already been doing it, you've kind of already maybe have the base skill set. Yeah. But once you can identify, you could probably even amplify your work more by knowing, okay, cool, I'm going to do this and use this because it's going to intentionally do the thing I want to do with my, you know, creation, you know? That's a fact. And again, going to school, you may not have the connections that you will need to be able to become a mangaka. Yeah. You can't just like draw forever and then... Well, now with social media, you kind of can, but it's really hard to be able to get eyes on you. That's We've been fact. doing this podcast for almost three years now. Yeah. We are finally starting to see like people look at us and be like, oh, okay, this is actually starting to feel like a legitimate podcast. Mm -hmm. Even Not, though since day one, we believed it was a legitimate podcast. Exactly. Yeah, I just didn't. Sorry. <laughs> exactly. But like, just like that, with becoming a mangaka, you can't just like, sometimes you just have to do you have to take other steps to be able to get there. Mm -hmm. And you could take one step or you could take the next, but either way, you're going to work for it. So yeah. I think that's just kind of like the whole like thing behind it where it's like you can go the school route, but you're still going to have to work. That's a fact. Or you can't, you could decide not to take the school route, but you're still going to have to work. Exactly. And then once you, whichever route that you take, the usual path that people take to like actually get their work seen and noticed is the one shot manga competition where yeah. basically different publishing companies, Kodansha, Shue, Shushue, um, they Sh decide, Shueisha, Shueisha. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Dark Horse even. Um, I didn't know Dark Horse made manga, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. They 
decide to do like manga competitions where people get to showcase their skills and the ones who win like the top rankings mm -hmm. sometimes get the ability to have their um one shot published and sometimes it comes with a, a deal either okay. it comes with a deal or it just comes with the connection to be able to create a future deal later later on which is dope as hell that's hard hard as hell yeah and once you get to that point where you're actually like either a mangaka or starting to be looked at by these different publishers as like a potential mangaka, mm -hmm. then you go through a whole different process. Yeah. It's not just, hey, you're signed. Congratulations. Here's a million <laughs> bucks. Bruh, it's more than that. It's literally you just drafting a piece of work left and right, mm -hmm. one by one by one. You're not even making the manga yet, bro. You're just storyboarding. Mm -hmm. You're storyboarding and seeing if an editor likes it. Yeah. And then once you hit that storyboard that the editor finally likes, mm -hmm. they're like, all right, cool. We can work with this. Now it's your next move. You're going to draft the manga. If the editor doesn't even like the storyboard, you know what they're going to do? Then cut it. They, they'll go, send it back. Mm. Try it again. Mm. Do it again. Bring it back to me better. Then once you finally hit the best point, they'll yeah. go, okay, we're going to draft the manga now. We're going to draft the manga. Not create a manga. Draft it. Yeah. And then you got to go through that same whole process of storyboarding that you were through, but with an actual like full fledged um, manga chapter. What was that one anime where the guy was a manga? Oh, uh, Erased. Erased, yeah. You remember yeah. when he was an adult yeah, and yeah, yeah. he was working for that shitty company? And they were like, bro, you keep bringing us straight trash. <laughs> Do it again. And bro, bro literally had like 5,000 pages. Yeah. That shit blew into the wind too. His life sucked. Like, yeah. Or wasn't um, the dude from. Uh, What's the one about the kid that ate toilet paper? Or Kotaro? Um, yeah, it? wasn't um Oh Boy a mangaka too? Or am I, I bugging? I, I don't remember too much about that one. Yeah, well, not Kota obviously not the guy oh, who was taking oh, care yes, of him. Yes, yeah, wasn't yes, he a mangaka yeah. too? You know what's funny? A lot of anime, a lot of animes really be like talking about the struggle of getting to this shit. <laughs> it's like you know what it's like. Man? What? What is it like? It's like back in the. It's like way back in the day during slavery times. Yeah. When um they were singing like those Negro spirituals, telling people how to like get from path to path. Yeah. That's what manga are doing with us now. They're That's just like fact. they're showing the torture of their like struggle through their artwork. Oh my god. <laughs> Where they're like, don't do this job, nigga. You, <laughs> you, it ain't a fun road to go through. You, you're not ready to write into your fingernails. Bleed, <laughs> yeah. nigga. Don't do it. That's the message that they send in through us, through these mediums of art. Yo, definitely watch um, Erase and watch My Neighbor Kotaro. Yes, sir. Yeah. Is it My Neighbor Kotaro? Kotaro um, Lives Alone. Kotaro Lives Alone. I just mixed My Neighbor, my neighbor Totoro. Totoro. <laughs> I've said it too before alone. on this podcast. I've said My Neighbor Kotaro plenty of times. Nah, that's a fact. But no, but... Yeah, once you get through that, you're not even done yet. That's the that's the interesting part about it that I learned. It's like the road is never over. Yeah. You start off as a person who wants to be a manga, then eventually you have the person you are the person who has the potential to be a manga mm -hmm. when you're like signed or when a publisher has interested you. Mm -hmm. And then even then, it's still a long arduous path that you have to take where you're mm -hmm. constantly getting your work sent back and told to do it better. It's fucked. It's wild, but also like with the art that we get from it, it's kind of like maybe that's just what it takes to create something like of this high of a value, you know? Honestly, I wish we had this type of like system when it came to rappers. <laughs> like, imagine if you had to go through all of it just to get your first like single, like like popularized mm -hmm. on like a on a streaming platform. Mm -hmm. Like, we're not gonna let you throw your shit on the streaming platform at all until you keep working on it. You feel me? Maybe we'd have some better just musicians in general. Fuck rappers, just musicians in general. Maybe. But you know, again, you know what I'm saying, like. It depends on the level you want to go. And that just, like, even with mangaka, like, some mangaka, they can stay independent forever and never get their stuff published in a major uh, platform. But, you know, if you want to take your series far, you're going to need some type of help. You yeah, know? 100%. And then, like, it's another path. Like, once you finish that draft, you can finally create a manga chapter. And then, if they like it, they go, all right, great. We're going to ink it. We're going to send it out and see how people respond to it. Mm. And after all of that process, it's not like you put out something and it's going to be automatically popular. That's now right. you have to see how the public reacts to it. Mm. If the public reacts well, great. We'll give you a couple more. I think they usually start off with a few chapters. And then it's like, all right, the public is reacting well to it. We're going we're gonna to keep this going. Mm. After the public decides, no, we don't want it. They'll either shut you down or go, hey, here's um, here's the responses in the surveys that we said to everybody. This is what they liked and this is what they didn't like. Mm. Take it, figure out how you're going to edit this and make it better. 
God damn. If it survives, it survives. If it doesn't, peace out. Figure out another one. This shit is scientific, bro. <laughs> bro, it's <laughs> wild. So they have a scientific method for, Son. For, for research for anime, but this is ridiculous. And this is before you're making consistent manga. No. This yeah. is just you trying to get a manga off the ground and Facts. started and running and and like continuously putting it out, whether it's weekly or monthly. Mm. And even when you get to that point, it still work. Yeah. Like putting out a weekly manga, bro, the manga co who have to put out a weekly manga, they're working seven days a week. Mm -hmm. Two days are just spent creating the story. Yeah. And then the rest of the days are literally just spent creating the story and making it like physical and drawing it and everything. Yeah, it's crazy. But I watched some video and they were talking about how Oda gets mm -hmm. like three hours of sleep on average per night. Son. And like those three hours are not like a straight three hours. It's like 30 minute naps yeah. in between. Cause like, he's just like, okay, all right, back up. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's, cr that's crazy. And they're just like slaves to their work yeah. where it's, it's tough because not only do they have the responsibility of making something, a creative master base like Oda has, mm -hmm. you also have the responsibility of everything else in life. You're working seven days a week, fam. That's a fact. How the fuck can you get anything else done? Like you better hope your manga is popular because yeah. if you're working seven days a week and you're not and you don't have the most popular manga in the world, how are you paying your bills? How are you taking care of your kids? How are you like entertaining like your social life? I wonder what that again is Japan. What so the, what the spouse yeah. life is for manga for a mangaka? Like how much responsibility do these if they have spouses or if they are married or have partners? What are their spouses' lives? Like? They probably taking care of crazy shit. He's Bro, probably like doing everything. Yo, baby, I know this is a tough ass, but I'm gonna need you to wipe my ass because. <laughs> I just don't got the time. Facts. <laughs> I'm just constantly sitting on the toilet drawing. Oh you might wipe it for me real quick. I can't get another diaper rash. Oh my god! And she's like, "Babe, why would you want me?" Oh, oh, oh! That 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 one piece check hit. No. <laughs> <laughs> How much we got? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll wipe whatever you want. Man, that's <laughs> well, blumpkin. While you at it, <laughs> that's rough. I mean, you definitely are gonna need some like very well like just deeply rooted support system. Whatever, 100%. It's like your spouse, your family, or just like your, even your team of creatives with you. Like you guys have to have a support system because there's no way yeah. that they're, that they've stayed alive this long with, without something helping them. You know what I mean? You'd hope so. But yeah. then I'd imagine like there's so, probably some mangaka that don't have anything That's dark. where they've just been working and creating this art piece for so long that they didn't have the opportunity to be, to get a spouse. Yeah. Because they literally just don't have the time. If you're working seven days a week, when are you supposed to date? Yeah, bro, it's crazy. Like during Golden Week? Yeah. <laughs> like I save this one like week a year to be able to like actually become a person. And then at the same time, are they even actually not working during Golden Week? Are they just being like, yo, everybody else is, has their day off, so let me actually take this time to get a edge over everybody else? Exactly. That's probably the mindset that they have to have in that. You space. know, you know. Um, so I, I also heard this too. Oda, mm -hmm. when he met his editor, was like, "Great. Um, are you ready to die for One Piece? Like, are you ready to die with One Piece? Like, that's crazy. That's like, how long it is? It is a long. <laughs> that's how long it's gonna be? He yeah. knew it was gonna be a lifetime journey from uh. the beginning. <laughs> that's wild, Bruh, It's it's just so like, it's so crazy what it takes. Like being a person who's a fan of anime and manga, you just you only pay to a, you only pay attention to the to the product that you get yeah the end product you look at this and you're just like oh wow this is dope as hell this is amazing when can i get the next one mm -hmm. and it's like all right you could get this next one after this person sheds all their blood sweat and tears and everything that they have in their soul onto this because that's just what it takes it's mm -hmm. making manga is not for the weak fam no this is not for the weak like there's magica who are literally i was reading i was um listening to this um video essay where somebody was saying that essentially if you really want to be a mangaka, you have to be willing to submit about 30 pieces of work every day to or your work to 30 different companies every day. Excuse me. You have to be willing to submit your work to 30 different companies every day and to hear no. Every day submitting your work to 30 different companies. It's powerful. And hearing no. The art of rejection. And also, it's just one industry. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's that many different companies when it comes to manga creation. There's probably only 30 companies, and you're just submitting probably. one piece of work, one different piece of work every day to these 30 companies, hoping somebody like takes you. 
Yeah, and there's somebody who's on the opposite end receiving under that line going, Son. I seen this guy yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yesterday. yesterday. <laughs> yesterday. And he's still making trash. <laughs> <laughs> and I really thought this one would be it. I told my boss, yeah. and my boss was like, bro, no? you think we really going to run this shit? <laughs> Send that shit back. <laughs> <laughs> bro, like, it's such a weird, arduous like path that they just have to take. And there's no part of me. When I was younger, I was like, I, I'd love to make an anime like Naruto and be yeah. like Masashi Kishimoto. Now, where I'm at now, hell the fuck no, bro. Yeah. I would never be a mangaka, son. It is not worth it to me. I appreciate them for everything that they do. I appreciate the time and effort and the, and the amount of hours of sleep that they've lost to be able to create this product. But it is not for me. Fam. I agree. I, I think that... You know, we just have to respect our mangaka and not everybody can make manga. So let the good people who do it make it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because if you aren't ready to commit to that, don't do it. Don't You can't. You literally cannot half step, quarter step, eighth step in no. making manga. You have to give it your, your all everything. times 10. It's your life. Everything. Like you're it's putting your, your life into your story. Facts. You're putting your life into your story. And then just being a regular average mangaka is not like you're making a bunch. You're not making a shit ton of money out of it, bro. Like, to be a mangaka, you're doing all of that work that I've explained before, and you're getting paid, not hourly, not sour, salary, you're getting paid per page. Per page, yep. Per page, and it has to be to the editor's, like, it has to be to the editor's liking. Mm -hmm. So the editor might be like, nah, you stretched this way too thin. Mm -hmm. I need you to cut the page count down. And you're like, you want me to cut my bag down on top of this? He's like, nah, it's stretched too thin. Cut the page count down. That's crazy. That's wild. So the average weekly manga is like 15 to 20 pages, mm -hmm. right? So they're just getting a certain amount per page. Mm -hmm. And then I think the I think if you translate it into dollars, the weekly manga, you get like 3K per um, manga. And then like maybe 8K per per month yeah, if you're doing yeah, a week the average, yeah. if you're doing um it and that's the average so the people who are on the high end of that are probably like raising it way up so the person who's like on the lower end is probably making nothing dude yeah and also you also have to understand like the the page budget that comes from that that's also what's used on the production team as well mm. like to assist in building the product of releasing these weekly chapters yeah there's right. actually a lot of mangaka that their assistants that they have we mentioned the assistants earlier and how like odo used to be one a lot of them pay their assistants out of pocket yeah they just go okay here here here's what i have for, for you mm -hmm. again like it's it's not as sexy as like it's not sexy at all i don't know if anybody makes it seem sexy it's not a sexy path to go through That's it's like once you get the money you got the money but to actually get there and the percentage of people that actually get there it's it's a ridiculous number ridiculous man but yeah even uh, from that so basically you get paid for the manga that you make the pages mm -hmm. specifically not hourly not salary you also get paid if your manga turns into an anime okay if it turns into an anime and it gets serialized you get paid but you know what's the crazy thing about that mm -hmm. you only get paid for the episodes that it gets made so if i make one episode if i if i have an anime that runs 24 episodes mm -hmm. i only got paid 24 times mm -hmm. even if that anime goes into like netflix and then get serialized over there. They're not paying you again. Yeah, so you're you're yeah, you're not seeing anything off of like distribution beyond like the major broadcast networks exactly. that it originally streamed on. That's rough. That's wild. That's rough. <laughs> That's <just> bad, bro. <laughs> but on the bright side, maybe signing 360 deals. <laughs> son, what the hell? On the bright side, they do get paid royalties for the mangas that they sell. That's good. So if you have one of the best selling mangas out there, um, i.e., One Piece, i.e. Fucking Demon Slayer, Jujutsu Kaisen. I don't know how well that's selling. I imagine it's selling well enough I mean, it, where you get enough of a bag. You get was, royalties off of high. it. They did a lot of sales on Tokyo Avengers. Yeah. Really good. So you get paid off of that. If your manga becomes popular enough to not only have an anime but have a movie, you get some percentage off of that as well. And then the real place that you make your money is when it comes to like merchandising. Mm. And that's interesting because it kind of relates to certain articles that we read when we were really early in making this podcast where <laughs> these Japanese companies have been like, yo, you making any piece of anime uh, merchandise? Yeah. You paying us, nigga. Pay the tax. Pay the tax, which is like now I kind of respect it a little bit more. Yeah, I, mean, I respect um. <laughs> just fix the mic. <laughs> just yeah, what's, what's, what's it's what's tilted. It's think about weight. So if you tilt it that way and then drop the mic, okay, it'll um it'll be more balanced. All right. So 
Yeah. So where was I? Merchandising is where they make most of their money. So like when it's merchandise on clothes, when it's merchandise on like specific things that they sell, like I got this My Hero hat. Hopefully <laughs> they went through the right places. If not, I'm sorry. Let me I'm sorry, on bro. You didn't, <laughs> you didn't get it. This this My Hero, the mangaka got paid for this. That's good. What else we got? Oh, we got books. We got these uh, displays. Yeah. In theory. The Magica got paid for it. Hopefully. Hopefully. I'm sure they did because this place is a pretty well-known company. You ain't getting um, a plug from us yet until you start to sponsor us, baby. Yes, but, yeah. So, eventually, if you do get to the point where you do have a really popular series, you can definitely make the bag from it. But you have to be the top of the top where they're actually, like, the way people go, if we... If we utilize your work in a specific way, we get a bag. So we're going we're gonna to give you a bag. And that's like the only way you really make money as a mangaka. Because if you're like a freelance mangaka who just does his work independently and you don't have a popular manga, you're kind of relegated to going to like specific websites like Fiverr or like TaskRabbit and having random people go, hey, can you pay me like, can I pay you $10 and you write me a whole manga, like mm. a five page manga of just like whatever I tell you to? It's fucked. It's it's really trash, bro. That is but nah, it's a honestly, I I have like so much respect, more respect for mangaka now than I have ever had in my life, just because like I never knew exactly what it took for them to get to where they needed to be. I knew a little bit, but not the full frontal like life that they need to go through. Mm -hmm. And it's it's tough. It's tough. They're really working their ass off to create these products just for our entertainment. So if you're a fan of manga and um, if you're a fan of manga, definitely do the artist a favor and buy the volumes Go because that. that's a good way to put that money in their pocket. Also, buy their licensed merchandise. Right. Don't waste your money going on um, these websites that, you know, you can find their merchandise for cheap, but they're not actually licensed. Do the research, figure out what... Um, is actually licensed by the creator and you know get some money in this mangaka's pockets because they they work hard i'm crazy bro so crazy i'm a support i'm a support all the homies bro for real I, maybe i'll start buying manga for real because damn that's so wild bro imagine yeah, doing all here. that work just for somebody to steal it <laughs> yeah it's so crazy I mean, but I mean, that, this is off cam, but there's there's some projects where you can read manga outside of buying it, where I think they do a better job at translating and doing other things than like the traditional manga publishing companies as well. Mm -hmm. So that's a whole other thing that I think the industry needs to look at too. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think honestly, the whole manga industry would probably benefit from like more of like a like creator platform, kind of like a, like you know like a YouTube for distribute like base distribution, and then like of course like a like uh like a pay per like you know pay per episode or pay per like you know pay the creator month like a subscription model um to help support the artist but you know it's hard to do platforms like that and kind of like it's almost like backhanding the the other side of the industry yeah you know so it's like those are like just the whole idea of trying to like combat that and kind of like make make it better for the mangaka is probably most definitely not as easy as i'm thinking as it is because it probably would have already been done already to yeah. be honest you know what i'm saying no, so. i feel you we need something that i i see what you're saying and i i see where you're getting at we need something to shake up the manga industry a little bit yeah remember when streaming first became a thing yeah and then soundcloud artists became a thing yeah we need like some SoundCloud mangaka, SoundCloud manga, where yeah. basically you're able to figure out a way where you can distribute your medium, your yeah. product, and you can create it and distribute it in a way where people can get it. And there's so many eyes on it that these industries are forced to pay you more. That's a fact. Eventually, the industry will figure out how to fuck you again, like what they did with streaming. Of course. But in the meantime, while like you are within that growth period of that, if especially mm -hmm. if you're in the forefront of it, I'd imagine like you can get really. I don't know how to do it, but these mangaka. Yeah, they're, we, they're, they're going to need like business tools. They're going to need like, you know, like resources that allow them to like, you know, maintain their licensing, maintain like, you know, if all the things that you said that they get paid from, mm -hmm. they need a team within that platform that can also make sure that things are staying legitimate and things are staying within their, their legal favor, favor. So that again, like, even if we have like something like a, like mm -hmm. a SoundCloud for manga, 
if someone goes, yo, I'm going to just make a hat off this shit, they're back to step one of losing all their, losing the bag to. I mean, with that, that's just only the trademarking and everything. You can kind of, as long as you hold the trademark, you could kind of back end into that later on. Yeah, you, know, you don't have to like focus all that into that because then you'd spread yourself too thin in the beginning. Yeah. But if you created that, if that platform existed, which we might, we may need to have to make one day. Yeah, we might. Yeah, maybe we give it. To, bro, I think we're giving it's away too much sauce. Let's not give it away the sauce. Something might have been born today. Y'all don't even know. That's all I'm saying, man. That's that's literally all I'm saying. But all we gotta say is Magica hit us up. Hit us line, bro. You try to be an independent Magica. That's a fact. <laughs> Sign to keep it at nine thousand. Yes, sir. Yo, gay gay, stop doing this dirty like this. I'll help you out, bro. <laughs> we got I mean. you, man. Yes, sir. Yeah, yo, yo, man. Let's switch it up. Let's talk about anime. Let's talk about anime, guys. So, anime is essentially another like part of the medium, right? When it comes to the whole story from manga, right? Not every anime is adapted from the manga. You know, it's not a full adaptation from the manga. And also, like, not every anime is a show. Some animes are movies. Some animes are just one-off, like OVAs, original vi video animation series. Yep. There are different ways to get anime, but of course, the mainstream is like a serialized show mm -hmm. that gets like seasons and like is constantly renewed, right? But it's not just easy as saying, "I right, so boom, guys, let's make an anime." That manga is doing great. Let's make an anime. Just like how hard it is to get the manga going. Getting an anime going to even being picked up yeah. is even harder. You know what I'm saying? Like that's like like legit. Like it's the next. It's one. Of, it's a product from it, and it's the next level to it, right? So you know, I guess at the top of the top of it all, it's kind of like like you know traditional media, TV, television, movies. You know, you do have like these big production companies who have a lot of money, and they go, "All right, guys, uh, what is it? 2025 is coming up, right? We need to get a portfolio going." What are we putting on our portfolio for 2025? How much are we investing and how are we getting our money back? What decisions are we making with series and shows to, um, to make our money back? Because we have this bag. We're going to get taxed for it if we don't use it. So we might as well just use it <laughs> anyway. Spend this bread. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you have those people, the, the production com companies, who, um, production studios who have that. But then you have your animation studios, which are different. So animation studios are like MAPPA, mm -hmm. you have like WIT Studio, you know what I'm saying, Studio Trigger. And the thing is, right, not everything is exclusive. Sometimes a production company and an animation studio are the same thing, wow. like a Ghibli, mm -hmm. like, right? And they just have like different separate, sub, uh, what is it, subsidiarities um, in, within like the corporate structure. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, there's people with the money. And there's people who are doing the work, and then the people there are people who are distributing the product. Mm -hmm. There are people who are licensing the product, and I mean it, it keep it can keep going. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like anime keeps going, but that's the base structure of anime to give you what you're watching. You know what I'm saying? Like, if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't have this podcast mm, today. You feel me? Because I wasn't reading manga first. I was definitely watching anime. First. Hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? So like that's the base of it. Now let's get into the actual like production of anime, mm -hmm. right? So everything starts with the script. Everything starts with the script, script writing script. The script, as you guys know, if it's a well-selling manga series, comes from the, the, the mangaka. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That is a script. That is the heart and soul of the series. Okay? So once that script is good enough or the series has sold enough or it's just like, you know, a great script, they go, all right, cool. How can we produce this to make it what it needs to be? So they go, okay, cool. Who should we pay to, like, animate this, this, um, this anime, right? Oh, okay, Mappa. Let's take Mappa today. Yeah. So Mappa now has a project. Mappa has the project. Mappa is going to work together with a director mm -hmm. and a team of uh, screenwriters mm -hmm. to adapt that script into the anime series. Now, there's more, there's more to that because they're going to have to make a lot of changes to the story and to the, the, like, the, the whole like, manga in general just to make sure that it like, fluidly translates into an anime because mm -hmm. not everything one for one translates that's why you know as a manga reader i get sad i'm like how come they didn't do that but you got to understand the decision that they had to make to yeah. make sure that happened and you guys seen live action one piece right there was so many decisions that they had to make to make sure the adaptation was within budget and was within the overall like like screenwriting that they were trying to put together yeah you I, know what i'm saying i can't imagine what it takes to do that transition from like anime to live action i'd imagine it's much easier from manga to anime mm -hmm. just because like you get to make so many more decisions because you're going from something that isn't moving to something that is moving so mm -hmm. everything in between is your choice yeah that's true that's why i think like the the whole one piece live action mm -hmm. show 
from what I really see from it, I really feel like they took more of a different route where they actually just sourced it off in the manga. manga yeah. That's why they had Oda on the team. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. Oda, again, is the master of the, of the script. Mm-hmm. He's the master of the script, so all the screenwriters can kind of derive from that and build from there. And here's another thing. You know what's crazy? When it comes to manga to anime, if they don't want to include the mangaka... They don't have to. Yeah, they really don't. <laughs> they, they, they really don't. They could be like, yeah, you made this shit, and it is heat. Yeah, like, we'll give you But rights. we got it from here, buddy. Facts. We got it from here, buddy. We'll pay you for your one. Ep- we'll pay you per episode. Mm-hmm. You'll get your buddy that you get. But after that, we will want to hear nothing from you, fam. Yeah, that's a fact. And, like, um, and so that's why I kind of was stressing, like, the screenwriting versus script writing. If you look at, like, some production credits for different anime, it's completely different. Yeah. Like, even, like, Oji Naruto, Masashi Kishimoto, just a, just a, script, just a, just a, just a script maker. He didn't direct it. He didn't, he didn't do the screenwriting. Mm-hmm. He was just, like, like, you know, like an overseer or a point of contact for the, for the series. Everything else is done by the production company and the animation studio. They handle everything else. And it's so, it's so crazy when you think about that because it's like, imagine it's like, all right, yo, keep it in our thousand licensing. So we're just going to let them create a different medium mm-hmm. version of this. How consistent can they make them? But, I mean, technically we signed the paper and we're getting the check for it. So we just have to kind of give them the good graces of doing us a favor because we don't want to micromanage it too mm-hmm. and kind of be like, yo, guys, you're doing an episode wrong every time. Like, we kind of got to let them do what they – they got to let them do what they pay for at the same time. So it's kind of rough. And it's like, I guess like when you think about your IP, like, I guess as like a, as a mangaka, you really have to hope that like the end production of what you a- allow to be released into the world as an anime is good. Cause we all, we've all seen it. There's some anime that once it became an anime was completely trash. And I'm pretty sure, I mean, no offense to the people, but it was completely trash. And I'm pretty sure the manga was definitely better mm-hmm. than the anime adaptation. But we got what we got because of what the production company and production studio put forward. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of sad and kind of crazy. Like Boruto. I mean, that's my favorite example of it. Yeah. Manga, great. Anime. Trash. <sighs> yeah. Trash, 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 trash. It's not doing what it's supposed to do. You feel me? But so that's that. And let's get into the actual production. So on production, right, once the whole, like, director's on the team, you have your uh, screenwriting done off of the script, you know what I'm saying? You've done your storyboarding. Your storyboarding is essential to the production, too. Your storyboarding is basically, like, the rough draft of where everything goes. So think of it almost like a manga, kind of, mm-hmm. where, like, they're just putting, like, a straight in line, and they have, like, if it's for the whole episode, maybe, imagine on a the, on the small scale, 10 scenes, right? These are all the key scenes we need to hit. What time codes are we putting for those scenes? How are we adding in the script so that it fits together? Yeah. Like, putting it all together in draft form, basically. Exactly. A storyboard is, if anybody's ever done, like, any type of screenwriting or anything like that, uh, most stories follow, like, a 12-point 12 point story structure mm-hmm. where essentially like you have your beginning which is like your incited incident which creates a story and then your end which is just a conclusion however right. the story ends mm-hmm. storyboarding is essentially that just mm-hmm. taking those major moments plugging them in and then figuring out everything in between through the rest of it facts and it's it's like it's so cr- it's so crucial that you get most of it right in that time like a lot of pre-production is really like it's the meat and potatoes of what you're going to get but of course, like, yes, the next step can really fuck it up, too, yeah. or it can give it its flowers and make it something bigger than they thought it would be. Another thing that I forgot to talk about is, um, oh, my God, concept. So concept art. So concept art is always it's like it's more in the beginning stages of the series. Mm-hmm. But of course, as the episodes go, sometimes they have to add in new characters, new uh, new backgrounds, new locations, new parts of the story. So you kind of have to always go back to the concept art. But the concept art is basically like the rough draft of what the animators are going to work off of. Yeah. And it's going to literally, it's, it's like the people involved in that are like the, um, the directors, the illustrators, the animators, and the art directors. Yeah. And it's building out like the style and fluency and like, I guess just the overall aesthetic. It's what everything's going to look like. Exactly. So if you don't got that concept art down in the beginning, you know, you're going to run into, I don't know, you've seen like, like, um, You've seen some series where they change studios and the concept art has completely changed. Like Attack on Titan. Attack on Titan. Attack on Titan, what is it? Like that last season or, you know, collection of last seasons? Yeah, when it was on Wit and they switched over to Mappa. It looks completely different, you know? And that really Mm -hmm. affects how people receive the show, you know? Um, So that's that. Now let's get into production. We have our animators, right? So there's two main type of animators that you guys need to know. The main animator, key animator. 
So think about the key animator as the motion, like the, the not the motion, the main scenes in anime. So when you guys read manga, a lot of like, you know, the big panels, one page panels, or like this, like the major panels that hit, think of that as kind of like the key animation for the anime, right? Mm -hmm. So typically they're referencing that. And of course they're going off of what was storyboarded and what was um, added in for concept art, right? So you have those key animators. Then what you have also is called the... Uh, in between animation. So mm -hmm. in between animation, either might be a little bit less experienced animators coming in mm -hmm. to fill in the gaps between key animations, or it's just kind of like people who didn't, of course, just need to fill in the gaps to make sure that everything's fluid. But the thing is, a lot of problems with anime that we get is it's not the key animation that's bad in an anime, but it's the in between, in between yeah. animation. Like sometimes, I mean, a, a famous thing that we heard was like Dragon Ball Super Episode 5. The in-between animation was so bad that it just, it wasn't working yeah. for the whole series at, like as a whole thing. Like, it's really bad. And we've seen something, you remember, you've seen those, those, those Naruto clips where in Boruto, where Naruto has like freaking crazy fox ears. Or you have like that Boruto crying scene. That's like. Yeah. Or um, Asta scenes in Black Clover where he's just like has no neck. Yeah. Or certain <laughs> scenes in Fire Force too, where it's just like, yeah, their faces just have just really no expression they just look ridiculous yeah no proportion but like mm -hmm. they they have to like essentially these people are there to support the animation because mm -hmm. we don't it's literally just gonna be like manga it's gonna be like key animation nothing key yeah. animation it's gonna be, look very choppy and of course like in between animation can be done now using like um we also have like like the 3d not 3d what's it called again a uh, cgi, CGI. Mm -hmm. like cgi also helps fill in with the in between so that like you know some things that don't need to be super highlighted mm -hmm. in this series kind of have like a little bit of filler in the show but traditionally those are important and of course like kev said when it came to making manga anime same thing back in the days all hand drawn yeah. now it's hand drawn but in a digital way but still sometimes you do have things that are still hand drawn on paper and scanned in as well mm -hmm. it depends on the production style that the production studio wants to take or the animation studio wants to take to release the final product mm -hmm. so it goes crazy um after that we have oh man so everybody knows this as coloring. So usually all that key animation, regular animation is done in black and white. Yeah. And then the color, the colorists really go in and add in all the colors. And you got to remember, they get a color palette based from the, um, the original concept thing mm -hmm. and art directors. But there's certain times where they need to make stylistic choices based off of like what time of day it is, what location the characters are in. Like that's very important. And like, you know, playing with light color, hue, saturation, things like that is really going to affect like the final look of the anime. Yeah. You have to be so intentional with it because cer especially when it's done really well, you're like, wow, this style is very specific to this anime. Mm -hmm. Like if you're watching a Death Note, the style is very specific to that. Like Death Note is very like dark looking anime where mm -hmm. it's just like you can obviously overall like the anime itself is just dark in general mm -hmm. but to see the theme of it in color and how it fits it yep. is something that it fits really well you know, we're also seeing the same thing with the bleach thousand year blood war oh yeah for sure where bro it's dark as hell yeah, and it just red. fits yeah or but then when you look at my hero even though it, it can go on the darker side it's a lot more brighter mm -hmm. it's a lot more colorful same thing with naruto and boruto it's just That's... like the you can kind of gauge what type of anime is going to be literally based off of the colors that you see from it that's a fact exactly bro like so you, exactly you can gauge what type of anime it's going to be also what type of scene you're watching you know when they darken the colors and dampen it it's some shit if, like, mm -hmm. if there's no clouds above them or they're not in a dark world mm -hmm. if they darken the scene there's a reason there's a stylistic impact to really yeah. trash the fact that this is a key moment that's maybe despair depression like whatever it is yeah. for the characters like it kind of it gets crazy bro but that's coloring and of course like the coloring team also has a special um they have a special part when it comes to like uh effects as well the coloring and effects team kind of have like a very similar time frame where you're doing the coloring and then you're adding effects like smoking mm -hmm. you know um, you have like different other effects, like maybe lightning or fire. Which we're watching anime, so there's so many of those effects. If you're watching Demon Slayer, all of those like Zenetsu with the lightning around him, or Tanjiro with the water or the fire, like that's all this team that it takes to create that. Exactly. Which is crazy because that's a whole separate team from the people who are just drawing the shit. Exactly, and that's like that's like real like like texture and like 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 visual depth yeah. that we that adds to it. Like if we don't have that, it's just flat. Yeah, and you know I'm sure I'm CGI and like um at this point um what you call it uh ChatGPT what is that 
AI. <laughs> AI and yeah. AI is probably helping a lot with that, but it takes people to definitely manage it and um, give it the flavor that it, that it gets for people to actually see it and it look like something that's positive and not just like us people splatting different things onto a page you know that's a fact and so also thinking about that too is uh we have our background artists which also just go under like animation colorist all that but back in the days most of the backgrounds were legitimately hand-drawn like yeah. like all of them were hand-drawn now we have the ability to use like digital tools to help make make uh make the backgrounds a little easier mm -hmm. that's why before i don't know if you remember old school anime like non-key scenes would look like shit like they have like a building and a white background <laughs> like at the bare minimum like it would look really empty or everything would look the same yeah literally <laughs> like, like yo they're in the demon world compared to them being in the demon world but the sky is still the same sky with just a little bit of like hue change yeah because they're just like all right take this slide throw it on there yeah. <laughs> scan that shit in <laughs> turn the lights off this time it's nighttime <laughs> exactly and so all oh, this is so crazy because imagine we just talked about like five different things that go on that all gets layered down in mm -hmm. a, a section that's called compositing so compositing is taking everything and putting it together, like scanning it in or like layering the files and making sure that everything is fluid in between. So the compositors are kind of like the people who marry everything together yeah. from the creative team in production. And like even with compositing, there's a lot of stuff that they need to make sure goes together. They might have gotten a panel and go, oh, hold on, animate, animate, bro, whoa. This does not connect with the um the in between animation. Like we gotta we gotta write that back. We gotta draw it back. Like yeah. it's it's not gonna work. Um, so compositing is also very important. Then after that, we have different teams. Like we have sound. There's sound effects. There's also lighting. I don't know about y'all, but lighting is very important when it comes to the entire world and scene. So like like real life, if there's a if there's a light coming from like a 45 degree angle, we need to make sure that's added on to the character so that you have some consistency in the environment that um, they're in. And of course, depending on the budget of the production, the lighting will go from like just bare minimum shit to like, I don't know if you guys ever seen like uh, Your Name and like that, that director's like, um, like Makoto Shinkai's work. Mm -hmm. That's his specialty is like creating the world, doing the compositing and then doing like the, the direction of the photography and the lighting together. Also, director, um, director of photography is also another important role in that. Director of photography is the person who goes. It's they, they have two roles. They have like the early storyboarding um, section where they're going. Okay, cool. When when we're uh, doing the um, the storyboarding for that moment, not storyboarding. What's it called again? The um, oh my god, I forgot it already. No, you don't. The 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 shit where you're you're drafting uh, and putting the time codes on. I already forgot. I don't know why. Compiling. Not compiling. Uh, sorry, my bad, bro. I had the thought and I lost it. Uh, what's it called again? Uh, oh, yeah, it is storyboard. I'm bugging. So when you're storyboarding, right, the director of photography comes in and they go, yo, we need to make sure we, like, capture that person at the right angle. Mm -hmm. Because if you're having, like, a monologue, you can't have the character, like, out of frame or, like, super far off. Like, you need to zoom in yeah. and really get that person in the angle. And if, like, there's two people talking, you need to have one staggered in front of the other. Same way, like, in traditional cin um, cinema, the director of photography does. They, they change their lenses. They do their focus poles. And they make sure that everything kind of, like, goes together and is fluid with the animation. Essentially, they make things make sense for the context that they're within. Exactly. Yeah, so you have all of that. And then you have... um. You have your sound, you have your editors who basically clip everything together. And editing is very important because you know why? You get a certain like time frame for the project from the um from the from the broadcast studio. They say, hey, this anime is gonna run for 24 minutes. So we just did all this, I'm talking, we just did all, all this animation, we did all this coloring, we did all this compositing, mm -hmm. and now we gotta cut this shit down to match the time that we get to produce the show exactly right and that's all done because of commercials yeah like now it's probably focused a lot less into that because there are some animates that are just going straight to streaming platforms yeah but a lot of the times with shit like that is just like okay we gotta make money off of this anime exactly. and the only reason why these studios make money from these shows is because people buy ad spots on the specific channels that they're shown on exactly and so you have to cut it for that yep and it's like okay we have enough we have 24 hours within a day mm -hmm. we are airing this many shows in 24 hours and we have these many hours of commercials that we have to plug in yep yeah it's it's rough <laughs> and it's a lot you, so you gotta remember some anime stu animation studios when it comes to certain series of anime they legit work 
like on a weekly debt, like week by week, they're still producing your yeah. shit depending on how big and like, you know, how much money they have. Like some people have the the ability to do a little bit of work beforehand and kind of like do their whole, at least half the season before. Mm-hmm. But just like mangaka, some animation studios are really like doing it week by week to deliver to the the um the final product. And of course, they can get rejected. They yeah. can say, hey, this did not work. We need you to fix this. Or they could publish it and then be embarrassed when things don't add up because someone didn't do their job along the line. But uh-huh. it's all like a, it's all a production line where we, you have to have faith in your team yeah. that it, it's all fluid. So if you do get one small wrong thing, don't set a fire to the project and not release it. But at the same time, that person is now their their ass is probably you know their ass is on fire because they're like, yo, we saw that you did the eye um blue when it was supposed to be green, bro. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, and sometimes like if an anime isn't doing well enough, like either enough people aren't watching it. Or back in the day, animes weren't made to like even sell commercials. Like mm. they would sell commercials off of them, but they were more so made to sell toys. Yeah. So if they weren't selling toys, they would just cut it. Yep. And just be like, all right, be gone. And now we're starting to experience like the resurface of not it happening, but almost like it being like auto corrected by us getting some anime back. Yeah. Like Shaman King is a positive example of that. Mm. Where when it first came out, they only gave it fifty episodes and then they dropped it. Mm. In Japan and outside of Japan. I think in the US uh no, yeah, it got 50 episodes in both, but it was just like it was weird. The adaptation from its manga over to its um over to its anime it just didn't fit. They made a lot of different creative choices. Oh, but same with Ronnie Kenshin, the original Ronnie Kenshin anime. Yeah, mm-hmm. same thing. And they only gave it fifty episodes or forty five, something like that. And then when they came back recently in the past couple of years, they actually adopted it as close to one for one as in the manga that they could have. Nice. And now it's done well. I think it only went to Netflix or maybe in Japan it went elsewhere. And now they're giving it the opportunity to have its sequel, the Funabari no Uta, with it goes off the story of uh, Yo Son. Which nice. is dope as hell to see because it's like some things got tr- um, stuck in the trap of like the capitalism that existed within the creation of manga, mm-hmm. um, within the creation of anime via manga that existed before it. And they just failed because of it. But now we have certain things that have come back and we need to keep doing that. Hashtag bring back Kenichi. Facts. Bring back Kenichi. Bring back Air Gear. Um, 25 episodes, bro. What? Trash. But I digress, bro. Like, there's so many shows that need to be brought back because they didn't have the proper resources to um, execute on the original story, the, the original script, right? They didn't yeah. go through the original script. They just bullshit and made some shit up. But, like, you know, like, like after editing, it's really just, like, distribution, you know? Getting it into a broadcast station. You know, if distribution on that is good, then you have, like, you know, your direct-to-DVD. So, and the thing about the DVDs with a lot of anime series is... A lot of the um, choices that needed to be made to make sure it could be broadcasted now have to be remitted and kind of like put back in so that you can have like the full series the way it was supposed to be animated. Mm, the director's cut. Director's cut um, added in. And then you have like other things like, again, like I said before, OVAs, movies. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, oh, I, dude, I forgot about the voice acting. After editing is actually the voice acting. Yeah. Voice acting's last. Like voice acting, of course, they started from the script writing. Yeah. Um, but... The screenwriting, but like the voice acting is the last touch only because they got to make sure the time codes match up completely. Yeah. So they don't want people to just act for no reason. Yeah. So that's very important. And then like post even distribution on the Japanese side, every country has their own form of dubbing for most animes. Some animes don't even get dubs. Like the Sorvoni Kenshin series, I don't think it will ever get an English dub. Mm. The new one, only because of, you know, how Americans probably feel about the whole like... uh like situation with the mangaka, like I think that it kind of shot the series in the foot. Like they can't feel worse than Japanese about it. Yeah, I don't know. Like the Japanese, do- <laughs> they did the Japanese <laughs> dub. <laughs> they got like, a- they fight with it. They forgot. <laughs> they- I think they got a French one too, and like a Brazilian one, but they don't got all uh, Portuguese. But they don't have English, and it's crazy. Like it's it's been like eight episodes now, nine episodes, there's no dub. So I don't know what they're doing with that, but. That's we'll like see. that. I think dubbing so important to receiving a series in your language. Yeah, it you makes know? it more accessible. Makes it more accessible because unlike you know like live action series, when you watch it dub, you're like, "Fuck this shit! This is it's not matching." But anime, for the most part, it's pretty fluid to get a dub in different for different series and make it complete for most people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Of course, you have your critics like me who shit on dubs sometimes, but there's some good dubs. You know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, that's that's how you make an anime, man. 
And of course, like these animation um, studios, they go on Twitter. They're like, yo, we're making an episode next week. Uh, we need some anime. We need some animators. What's up? Um, mm-hmm. I think the key animators are people who come back on a freelance basis. Mm-hmm. So like key animators change up every episode. And also like the art team, art directors, and things like that also change up depending mm-hmm. on the like um, the contracts as well with the animation studios. That's why when you watch an anime sometimes, you'll watch a whole season and shit is not consistent from episode one to episode 24. Like there's a lot of team changes that goes on within the whole animation process. Yeah. Nah, it's it's wild. For those who are listening, it's just like it takes a lot to make these uh, mediums, like to make uh, manga and to make an anime. Mm-hmm. It takes literally like hundreds of people. Mm-hmm. And it's not an easy feat it takes hundreds of people it takes hours of like just work and work and work and hours of sleep missed so if you enjoyed a medium you know talk to us about it keep it in 9000 you can follow us uh, you can find us on all social media platforms you can find us on instagram you can find us on tiktok you can find That's us on fact. youtube make sure to have that conversation with us because like this was interesting to us to just learn about this stuff and communicate it with y'all yeah. let us know what your thoughts on it like, did you know all of this? Did you know it took all of this to be able to make an anime? That's a fact. Were you fully aware? Did you know it took all of this to make a manga? Do you have dreams of eventually becoming a mangaka or working at an animation studio? Facts. If you do, do you think it's... Do you still have that dream after hearing what it takes to do so? Do you put more respect on filler episodes now? I still don't. Like, <laughs> you, you just... You do... <laughs> you killing yourselves and wasting our time? <laughs> crazy concept that's wild it's a wild concept bro man Uh, that's a fact but yo thank y'all for listening j cole close us out yes sir all right guys it's been keeping a nine thousand. if you love the research if you love the emotion if you love the jokes man we're keeping a nine thousand in anime podcast from a new york city point of view you can find us at keeping a nine thousand on all major podcast streaming platforms if you prefer to watch the episodes and video we do have our videos asynchronous asynchronously of course on youtube and we also have our clips on um, at Keeping 9000 on every single social media platform yes, where you can share it with your homies, share it with your group chat, share it with your girlfriend, your mom, your dog, your cousin. And, you know, share the gospel of Keeping 9000. And if you really fuck with us, like, you really feel like, damn, like, I really want to chat with these boys every day about anime, manga, and just the whole medium of it, join our Discord. That's all I got to say. Join our Discord. Link in the bio. Everything link in the bio. I Keeping 9000. It's been Keeping 9000, man. Thank you for Keeping it 9000 with us. We will always keep it 9,000 with you, and we'll catch you on our next episode. It's over 9,000!